Hello, welcome to another video. Now this is another quick um, logarithm problem and we just solve it quickly. Well, there are two ways, the quick way and the not too quick way. I'm just gonna show you the quick way first and in case you, you won't do that naturally, I'll show you the other way. Okay, let's do the quick way first. So the quick way is to make everything look like this. So this is the only one that's strange. So I'm gonna to try to rewrite this one half so that it is log something to base 16. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say this is log x plus one to base 16 equals, well, I don't know what's gonna be here, but I'm gonna figure that out, okay? And then this is gonna be logarithm of x to base 16. Well, how do I know what's gonna be here? It's gonna be the logarithm to base 16 of a number. What will that number be? Well, it has to be the answer you get when you raise 16 to power 1 half. That's the meaning of logarithm. Remember, it's the inverse function of exponential functions. Okay, so it means if I wanna know what number is gonna be here, it's simply 16 to the power of 1 half because the definition of logarithm is the power to which the base must be raised to obtain that number. So for example, if I write the logarithm of y to base 16 is this 1 half that we have here, but we wanna change this 1 half to this, what will this y have to be? Well, y has to be 16 to 1 half, which is the square root of 16, which is gonna be four. So I'm gonna write four here. So that's the only thinking that you need to do to solve this problem. Beyond this, you just need to apply the law of logarithms, which says when you're adding two log functions with the same base, just multiply the arguments. That's it. So we can just say that what's here, x plus one is equal to four times x. You solve this equation and you get your answer, okay? You're gonna get three x equals one and x is one third. That's the quick way. And it's only quick if you don't have to do all these explanations, you just know that this has to be the square root of the base. Okay, if it was one third, it would be the cube root of the base. If it was two, it would be the square of the base, just like that, okay? So that's how this one goes. That's the quick way to solve this, x would be one over three. Now let's go to the way that's not the quickest way. So the way that's not the quickest way is if you try to collect the like terms, you move the logarithms to the same side and that's gonna look like this. So this is gonna look like logarithm of x plus one to base 16 minus the logarithm of x to base 16. Your answer is one half. Well, you can apply the laws of logarithms that when you're subtracting logarithms of the same base, what you do is you divide the arguments, just the complete opposite of what we did here. So we divide the arguments, we end up with the logarithm of x plus one divided by x to base 16 is equal to one half. So the next thing to do now is use our brains the definition of logarithms has to come in again. The logarithm of an argument to a base is the power to which the base must be raised to obtain the argument. Let that sentence remain on your mind permanently. The logarithm of an argument to a base is the power to which the base must be raised to obtain the argument. So the power to which 16 must be raised to obtain this argument is this, that's the logarithm, which is one half. So which means that x plus one over x is equal to 16 to the one half, which we know means 
square root of 16. Okay, so this is going to be x plus 1 over x is equal to 16, I mean equal to 4. Now you would say, um, isn't the square root supposed to be plus or minus 4? Well, you can gauge, it, yeah, you can do plus or minus 4, but at the end of the day, when you get your x, uh, let's even do plus or minus 4 and see what we get, okay? Maybe you'll learn something from that. Plus or minus 4. Okay, so then we're going to have um, x plus 1 equals 4x or x plus 1 equals negative 4x. Okay, so from here, you notice that 3x will be equal to 1 and x will be 1 over 3 or you're going to have um, if you bring this here and take this to the other side or whichever whatever you do you're going to end up with 5x equals negative 1 and x is negative 1 negative 1 over 5 rather negative 1 fifth okay the problem with this is that it is possible that your x is negative 1 over 5, but if you go back to the original question, x cannot be negative. Now, if x had been combined with something else and eventually the argument will not end up being negative, you can accept a negative answer for your x. But now, if you look at the things you have, if you put it here, it's acceptable because negative 1 over 5 plus um, one is going to be a positive argument so it's good for this side but if you try it here it doesn't work because it's just negative one over five and the argument can never be negative okay the reason being that you cannot raise 16 to anything to obtain a negative answer no the exponent of anything is either a fraction or an integer but it's never negative okay unless in itself it was negative <laughs> the base cannot be negative okay so that's the understanding of that. This is the only acceptable answer. That's why I did not bother to do this because of the way we wrote this. Okay, uh, that's it. Basically that. This one saves you the problem of you going through the negative. So whichever way you like, as long as you understand what you're doing, it works. If you learned anything, give this video a thumbs up. Leave a positive comment. Give it a share. And make sure you subscribe so you... And hit the notification bell also so you know the next time I upload, upload the next video. My name is Newton Okiwa. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, don't stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living.